Hi, and welcome to this video about understanding Azure Active Directory and Open Authorization 2.0 in the context of a SharePoint Online modern solution. Just to set the context, in this video, we are going to understand what Azure Active Directory and Open Authorization 2.0 are from a consumer point of view whenever you want to consume any REST API in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. In fact, using AAD and OAuth, you can easily and securely consume Microsoft Graph, SharePoint Online REST APIs, and any other third-party APIs registered in Azure AD, which can even be a REST API of your own. Whenever you consume an API, no matter if it is Graph, SharePoint REST, or a third-party one, you will have to provide an access token. So in this video, we are going to understand what a delegated access token is, which is something that we use whenever we want to consume an API on behalf of the currently connected user, or the application token, access token, which is the one we use whenever we want to consume through a backend service or a daemon, an API without a specific user identity. And we will also dig into the internal structure of an access token. So let me move to the demo environment and let me show that in practice. Let's start registering an application in Azure Active Directory to play with it and to retrieve an access token and understand what's inside of an access token. So here I am in Azure Active Directory and I'm going to click on App Registration and to create a registration for a new application. The application could be the Adin Transformation demo application and it will be a single tenant application. Let's click on Register. So now I have the client ID of this application and the tenant ID, which are really useful and we will use them pretty soon. Then in the certification secret, we should create a client secret for this application in order to use it to retrieve an access token based, for example, on an authorization token. So let's click on add. This will be the value of my client secret. Let me copy it in a safe place because I will later on use it. And then let's go to the API permission section. In this section, by default, we have the user.read delegated permission. So we can read the information about the current user, basically. That's the meaning. And then we can add a permission, for example, for Microsoft Graph, still delegated. So we want to use Microsoft Graph on behalf of the currently connected user. And in the delegated permission, I want to retrieve the permissions to work with the mail, for example, of the user. So I can search for mail.read and I can get the mail.read permission. I can eventually add additional permissions like, like for example, the site.fullcontrol.all, uh, which means all of the sites that the user has access to uh, will be also accessible to the application that I'm configuring. Of course, if the user will grant that permission to my application. We can also configure other permission like, I don't know, sites.read, dot all if you rather want to read it and so on and so forth. So let me add these permission requests. So these are the permissions, delegated permissions that I granted to my application. Notice that actually I haven't yet granted them because for example, this one, the site.fullcontrol.all requires a tenant administrator to do the grant for this permission. So let me do that. Being a permission which is quite an elevated permission, it is uh, uh, really useful to have an administrator, a tenant administrator, to say yes, I grant it for this application. We can eventually also add permissions of type application, so still select Microsoft Graph and now click on application permissions. These permissions will be granted to the app in order to be able to consume Microsoft Graph without a specific user identity, but just with the application identity. So for example, again, I can search for site.read and I will assign the site.read all permission of type application to my app. And again, I need a tenant admin to grant this permission. Now that I've done that, we can configure the authentication of this application in order to be a web application, just to make an example. And the web application will use a redirect URI, which can be, for example, the URL of PMP on GitHub. So pmp.github.io just to make an example. And we will enable this application to give back the access token and eventually the ID token if needed. So now the application is fully configured. We can now switch to Postman, for example, and start playing with it. So first of all, let me copy the client ID of this application. Let me go to my 
Postman tool and let me configure a bunch of uh, variables. So for example, the client ID of the application that I'm going to use, as well as the secret. And don't worry about the value of my secret because I will refresh it right after recording this video. So no a problem. Then I will specify the redirect URI for my application, which is the one I already configured in my uh, authentication section of the app. So I can save the variables and I can come here where using uh, Postman, I can build a URL for getting the authorization code. So login microsoftonline.com slash followed by the tenant ID that I'm targeting, open authorization 2.0, authorize and point. I will specify that I want to be redirected to the PMP GitHub IO. I want to get the access token for this client ID application for these specific permissions. So user read, mail read, and I also want to get the open ID and the profile and the offline access. So if I click on this uh, icon, I can get the whole URL that I should use in a browser to leverage the Open ID Connect protocol and get uh, an authorization code. So let me switch to my browser and let's go in a clear tab. Here we can paste the URL and we will see that we've got automatically redirected to the uh, pmp.github.io site because I am already authenticated. Indeed, if I would do that in an anonymous session, I would have to provide uh, my user credential first. Now, here in the query string, I have a code, an authorization code. I can copy the value of this authorization code and I can paste it as a variable in Postman. So let me go back here and in the authorization code, I'm going to use this code. Okay, so that I can make a request to get an access token for this application. My target will be a post request to https login.microsoftonline.com slash tenant ID slash open authorization v2 token. In the request, in the body of the request, which will be a form data request, I will have the grant type, so I've got an authorization code and I'm providing the authorization code back to Azure Active Directory through this code argument. Then I'm providing the client ID and the client secret of my application and again the redirect URI. So let me execute this request. By doing that, I've got back a JSON response which includes the access token for the user, the refresh token and the ID token. And we can dig into them. For example, if I get the value of the access token right here, let me copy it, I can go back to my browser and I can go to jwt.ms .ms. through this site I can see what's inside the access token and we can see that inside the access token we have a bunch of claims which include information about the target audience this is the unique ID of Microsoft Graph because I requested an access token to consume Microsoft Graph uh, and then I have the information about the user who made the request and I have the information about the uh, permission scopes that are assigned to this token. So for example, may read, site full control dot all, and so on and so forth. These are the permission scopes that we configured in the application in Azure Active Directory. So using this specific access token, which I can copy again back into the variables of Postman, we can then make a request to Microsoft Graph. How? Well, we make any kind of request accordingly to the permissions that we have. So for example, I can say, uh, consume https graphmics.com slash v1 slash me slash messages and I want to get the messages in my inbox. From an authorization point of view, I will use a bearer access token where the value is the one I've just got from the token request and as such I can make my get request. And here we are. Here I have all of the messages in my inbox. Perfect. Now, eventually, we can also play with additional stuff like uh, when we requested the, the token, we also got back a refresh token and we can use the refresh token to get a new access token whenever the access token will expire. In fact, in the claims of the access token, we have the information about when it will expire and when it will start to be uh, valid from. So NBF and EXP will be the claims which will state uh, from when to when the access token is uh, uh, usable by an application. So I can go back to my variables. I can add a value to the refresh token variable as well. And we can make a request to get a new access token through the refresh token. We target again the token endpoint. 
Now we say that the grant type is not anymore the authorization code, but it is a refresh token, which we will provide in the request right here. We still provide the client ID and the secret and the redirect URI, and by making this request, we will get back a new access token, which will last uh, uh, more than the previous one, and that we can use to replace the current one with a new one to keep it fresh and refreshed. Now, this is the theory. If you want to play at low level with an access token, with the refresh token, with the authorization code, and so on and so forth. Now, we want to use this technology and this security layer in SharePoint framework. So, let me switch to a SharePoint framework solution that I created for the sake of showing you how to play with Microsoft Graph and with Azure Active Directory and Open Authorization in a modern SharePoint framework solution. And here we have an SPFX solution in which I have a web part. In this web part, we can simply rely on the context object of SharePoint Framework, and we can use the Microsoft Graph Client Factory. This will provide us with a getClient method, which will give us back a client to consume Microsoft Graph. What is interesting to notice is that from this object, we can then get an instance of a client that we can use to consume Microsoft Graph without taking care of all of the complexity under the cover of retrieving the access token and doing all the stuff we just saw in Postman. In SharePoint Framework, we simply have all of the plumping well hidden under the cover and we can simply focus on what we want to do. Just for the sake of completeness, we also rely on the Azure Active Directory Token Provider, AAD Token Provider Factory object, still available in the context of SharePoint Framework, to get a token provider and to use it to get a token for Microsoft Graph. This functionality will allow us to get the access token that we can use to consume Microsoft Graph, just for the sake of showing you what we get back. Then, I'm going to initialize and use a React component that I created, which will accept the Graph Client and the Access Token as the input argument. This is my React component. And in the React component, on component did mount, I will simply load some data from Microsoft Graph. So here, what I'm doing is, if I have the Graph Client in the properties of my React component, I simply use the client with a Fluent API, which is available in SharePoint Framework, to say, call the API called me, slash me, in Microsoft Graph, and make an HTTP GET to that API. We can make a GET, we can make a POST, we can, generally speaking, leverage the HTTP layer protocol to interact with Microsoft Graph. And when the request will be done, we can simply store in the state of our React component the user principal name of the currently connected user. Moreover, in the render method, we render the output of the request that we've just made, as well as a button which will show the content of the access token retrieved in Microsoft SharePoint framework for consuming the Microsoft Graph. So, this web part is already running in my browser, so let me switch here and let me show you the web part in action. I can refresh it. You can already see that I see my user principal name right here in the web part. This has been retrieved through Microsoft Graph by SharePoint Framework. And under the cover, I have an access token. If I will click on this button, we can see in jot.ms the access token that SharePoint Framework is using right now to consume Microsoft Graph. It is interesting to notice that, again, the access token has the uh, audience for Microsoft Graph because we are using it to consume Microsoft Graph. We have the client application that made the request for the access token, and the client application is called SharePoint Online Client Extensibility Web Application Principle. Very long name. But at the very end, it is an application registered in every Microsoft 365 tenant, which is shared across all of the SharePoint Framework solutions running in every tenant. And through this application, SharePoint Framework is making graph requests to Microsoft Graph. Here we can see the permission scopes that I have for this application. And we can see that we have plenty of uh, permission scopes registered, and which can be configured by developers in the package that solution.json file using the web API permission request section. Here, every developer in every solution can declare what kind of permissions will be needed by the application 
to consume, eventually consume Microsoft Graph. And whenever you will do that, and then you will package your solution and deploy the solution in the app catalog of a target tenant, a tenant administrator will be allowed to grant the requested permissions. You see Web API permission requests. So in your solution, you make a request for one or more permissions, and then a tenant admin who will install your solution in the target tenant will eventually allow those permissions to your application. And when it will happen, then under the cover, the SharePoint framework plumbing will retrieve the access token for you and will make it available to your code so that in your uh, web part implementation, you will simply need to say graph client, MS graph client. So you will need to use an instance of the object retrieved through this method and you will be able to consume Microsoft Graph. The same logic applies also to third-party APIs. But right now, in this video, I want to focus on consuming Microsoft Graph. Here you can find additional links uh, to dig into the topics covered. And like always, thank you for watching this video.